If you live in Japan or are looking to live in Japan, you're gonna feel lonely and here's why. Hey friends, it's Akadiris and in this video, I wanted to address loneliness in Japan. This is a more serious topic, but I just wanna let you guys know after four and a half years of living here, I don't see myself moving out of Japan anytime soon. I do think that the good outweighs the bad and I don't see myself moving to the US anytime. As you guys see from my channel, I have years worth of content to show you guys all of the great reasons why you should come or visit or live in Japan, but no country is perfect. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna be talking Talking about something a little bit more serious. I don't want to scare anyone out of wanting to live here, but loneliness and anxiety in Japan is definitely something that you should take into account. The reason I'm bringing up this topic is because I recently had lunch with one of my personal friends who is very good at Japanese. I'd say that they've pretty much conformed to Japanese society and their behavior is what everyone expects from them. And they have a decent amount of friends. They're a pretty sociable person. So this is someone that from the outside looking in, they are definitely going to live here for a long time. But while we were eating they said you know Aki I've been living here for almost two years and I think I want to move back to my own country and then I thought well, why you're doing so well and so they said I know but I can't put my finger on it but I feel more lonelier in Japan than I ever have in my entire life and I don't know why moving to any country is going to be stressful you are adopting a new culture probably a new language and also a new way of thinking let alone when you move here you have to understand that Japan is a country that is different from almost anywhere else in the world and it has so many rules that you have to catch up with that can become very pressuring later on in life so as me and my friend were talking, I realized, oh my god, you know what? I feel the exact same way and I've always beaten myself up over it because I live a really privileged position in life, whether or not in Japan. I have a good relationship, I have friends, and even though my family isn't here, they're only a call away. So what do I have to complain about? Why do I still feel lonely? Not to mention, I felt my anxiety shoot up a lot. We're not going to be including the years that COVID was around because I feel that that was a time where everyone was feeling lonely. I feel even even without the pandemic, I still would have felt this way in Japan. But I've always brushed it off and just try to count my blessings, but it does creep up on you. One of the reasons for this is moving to a new country. Like I said earlier, Japan is so different from the rest of the world. And one of the things you're gonna have to accept is that Japan in itself is a very quiet and introverted country. And I'm an introverted person who also had anxiety before I even moved here. So I thought that the transition was going to be quite smooth for me. Little did I know actually being an introvert and then moving to an introverted country actually adds on top of that. No matter how introverted you are, human beings are sociable people. And for me, I was growing up in one of the loudest countries I'd say exists. I mean, I'm Filipino and I'm American. Filipinos were super loud. Americans were even louder, maybe too loud. But as I was growing up, every adult around me has always said, just do what you want. Don't care what anyone thinks. No one's opinions should matter. Japan is very much the opposite where a lot of people grow up with not wanting to inconvenience other people, leave people to do their own thing and just be respectful to everyone towards you. Now that sounds really great on the surface, but the extremes of it is that it comes to an extent where people don't even share their feelings with you and they have a thing called tatamae. Tatamae means putting on a face. It means that you're just being nice to people just for the sake of being nice and you're not really sharing any of your true emotions with them. America does have this, but I feel like we make up for it by being super straightforward people anyway. There's a time and place in America where people will feel like they don't want to share certain things with you, but for the most part, I think that compared to Japan, we're pretty straight arrows. Whereas in Japan, unless you're a really, really close friend of someone, it's going to be pulling teeth to actually get them to share what they really feel. People here tend to bottle their emotions up and not tell you how they really feel in order to not inconvenience you and to keep the peace. The only problem with that is that because you're keeping everything inside and you bottle it up, this is what causes things like this. So this is a really viral video from TikTok and I'm just going to play it for you now. Yeah, so to be fair, I've actually 
only seen something similar to this maybe once out of all the years that I've lived here. But this is just kind of showing you that this does happen. Not to say that other countries don't have public meltdowns, but as you can see, nobody's really stopping to help her. And I guarantee you after this filming, no one probably did. But at the same time, I mean, she is losing it. So I guess for people, they really do don't know how to react in that situation but even still this just this is just something that I 100% see that there's probably not a single person that would have stopped to talk to her and I actually feel bad for this woman she clearly is distressed about something and then she goes viral on TikTok from someone else filming her um what really sucks is when I was looking this up I was trying to find it again on the internet I saw it on like comedy websites and I really don't think this is something to make fun of because it is really distressing for someone because we don't know her story we don't know the background to this and what led her up to this point but when you're only given a woman that's just going crazy I guess to people going around her they're just probably side-eyeing her just saying yep that's a crazy girl and in more extreme cases you get people who become hikikomori which are people with extreme social anxiety who lock themselves away from the rest of the world and go through what's called kodokushi which means death by loneliness this is when someone passes away and isn't found until days months and maybe even years later because no one either checked up on them or no one even knew them in the first place to check up on them because they've been so isolated these are really extreme cases but in a casual setting you still still feel that loneliness. And one of the biggest reasons is because you're paranoid about what everyone thinks about you here. Because in Japan, it does matter when people give you a look. There's been so many times in Japan where I have had a friend who has lived in Japan longer saying, Aki, don't do that. That person is staring at you. Oh, do you know that that guy just looked at you? But my American self is like, so? In America, that's probably the nicest thing anyone can ever do. It's better than yelling at me. But in Japan, something as little as someone just eyeing you, like with bombastic side eye, means a lot. And when you start to adopt that and have that line of thinking, it does get a bit stressful because now you're always going to be wary of how are you behaving in society? Is someone judging you? Another reason for loneliness in Japan is the lack of mental health support. I feel Japan has a lot of work to do. There are therapists in Japan, but it is going to take a lot of work to find them. And even when you do, it's not going to be cheap. Actually, looking at it right now, Japan didn't even consider depression an actual disease until the late 1990s. Millions of people all over the world, particularly in Japan, where depression is widespread, are largely neglected. According to the globalists, one of the reasons for this neglect is the feeling of the shame that is associated with mental health. Many people would rather think that there is something wrong with them rather than suffer from an actual medical condition that can be treated. And in most cases, people resort to something what's called gaman, or the will to endure. And again, this isn't even just foreigners living lonely in Japan, there is something about this culture that can take a toll on you if you're not keeping your mental health in check. It's even to a point that people move into manga cafes in order to just shut out from the rest of the society. They're pretty much hikikomori at that point. So I know that this is a lot to worry about when it comes to Japan, but the good news about it is that there is a way around it. And again, as somebody that has lived here for a while, I still do want to live here and there are ways to go around it. So actually I'm going to be sharing some advice that isn't just good for people living in Japan, but also just good for anyone that is struggling with loneliness or anxiety. One of the biggest pieces of advice I can give is just changing your mindset about a situation. Our minds are very good at tricking us. You have about an average of 50,000 thoughts a day. So it's only expected that out of those 50,000 thoughts, you're probably going to be thinking of a lot of negative things. Human beings, I feel it's very common to look at the negatives more than the positives. There are some people out there that are naturally optimistic people, but there's a lot of people where you can shake 99 hands but you'll always remember the one that punched you in the face. So if you only look at the bad things about Japan, for example, then it's easy to scare yourself out of wanting to live here. But for me, if I catch myself dwelling into all the negatives, I think, well, what about all the positives? What if it all works out? And I looked at it and I, at the end of the day, I still think that it fits me and my interests and what I want out of life. And as far as the loneliness in Japan, I tell myself that, yeah, I may have felt lonely in Japan, but it is something that I'm willing to work through. And I'm actually kind of relieved that I'm not the only one that feels that and that I'm not going crazy, which goes into the second thing. Just keep yourself busy. If you just sit there with all 50,000 thoughts a day and do nothing, then you just get in this really nasty 
cycle that becomes a habit of you just being really negative and more of a shut in and eventually just having trust issues with people because you've created a lot of negative scenarios in your head when sometimes all it takes is just a hobby or hanging out with a friend or just doing anything to just distract you joey for example has a lot of hobbies i honestly think that it's come to a point i feel like that man just does not have the capability of just doing nothing it's it's amazing how much he keeps himself busy i don't really have that stamina but whenever i catch myself on the couch or on the bed dwelling on things that i shouldn't be dwelling on i try to find the discipline to distract myself in some way whether it be a hobby or calling someone the third piece of advice is pretty interesting because this is coming from someone that i was talking to but they said that for, especially for living in japan their piece of advice was to enjoy being lonely being alone doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing it gives you time to work on yourself it gives you time to do the things that you want to do and i feel like at the end of the day people have the power to make their lives the way that they want and as you get older it does get harder to stay happy so i feel like true happiness is something that is earned and has to be worked towards too at the end of all of this it just kind of comes down to taking care of yourself oh yeah and also addiction to social media i'm just going to kind of throw that in there but there is no coincidence that young people especially between the ages of like 18 to 30 anxiety has just shot up and a lot of that has to come with social media addiction i feel like with social media you're either addicted or you're not those who aren't have time to do other things in real life but to be honest they're also missing out on a lot of stuff whether it's somebody that didn't follow you or comment on your photo or like they're hanging out with other people and not you social media plants a lot of insecurities and a lot of really negative thoughts in your head that shouldn't have been there in the first place and i feel like whatever is said in reality just gets totally misconstrued when it's online it's like reality and the internet have two different languages so i treat them almost as like separate things so i feel it's just really important to find a balance in between i hope that this video did shed light in some way i know that i didn't do a good job at saying this in this video but japan i still think is a really great place and even though there are some factors like loneliness that is a big issue here i feel like life is only what you make it no matter where you are in the world but i appreciate you guys for watching and subscribe to my channel for more content and i will see you guys in the next video bye